How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for MSK. We have a 72-year-old dude who has Paget disease of bone. It's usually going to be a male over the age of 50, and they can give you buzzy descriptors such as saying that the hat doesn't fit the way it used to, that there's tinnitus to the narrowing of the acoustic foramina, and they want you to know that up to 50% of Paget disease of bone cases are discovered incidentally, where on this CT of the head here, doesn't it appear as though we have heterogeneous bone? There's areas of clastic and blastic mixed activity. That's what Paget disease is. They want you to know, especially for step one, they can list a bunch of different answers as mechanisms. The answer is going to be increased bone turnover. So you have mixed clastic, blastic phases, heterogeneous bone and Paget disease. And the first step in diagnosis for Paget is going to be choice B, check serum ALP levels. It's very high yield. Now that in and of itself, fine, 2CK step three. It can show up on step one, but for step one, what I want you to memorize and is very important is that you only have an isolated increase in ALP in questions for Paget, 14 or 15 times. In other words, calcium normal, phosphate normal, PTH normal. Students fuck that up. They think, oh, like calcium's, no, it's not. Okay, calcium's normal, phosphate's normal, PTH normal, isolated increase in serum ALP, 14 out of 15 times. Okay, you can technically one out of 15 times get a normal ALP if you're in an isolated classic phase. You need to know tangentially that ALP activity can reflect osteoblast activity. They want you to know that the osteoblast is the cell that secretes ALP. Okay, so for instance, if we had hyperparathyroidism, we have increased PTH activity at bone, well, doesn't PTH bind to osteoblasts, which in turn stimulate and activate the osteoclasts? Well, ALP goes up because PTH is activating the osteoblasts initially. So even though that's not occurring here, it's to reinforce the point that when you have increased osteoblast activity in general, ALP goes up. And if they give you some strange syndrome where they tell you a patient has decreased serum ALP and they ask you which bone cell is messed up, the answer is osteoblast. That's also on the NBME. So we check serum ALP levels first, and we'll see that calcium, phosphate, and PTH are normal. Then we can go on to do choice D, a scintigraphic bone assay, aka bone scan, Tegnetium 99 scan, just looks at the extent of disease. Skeletal surveys are not typically done. They can be just x-rays of the bones, but the syntographic Tecnectium 99 bone scan is preferred. So we, do, we check the serum ALP levels first. They're increased. We do the bone scan. And then bisphosphonates are the treatment of choice for Paget disease. Bisphosphonates inhibit osteoclasts. Okay, so we said increased bone turnover is the mechanism you assimilate wants. Mixed osteoclastic elastic phases. And then choice C is a little bit tricky. In patients who have hypercalcemia, which is not the case here, they want you to know for 2CK and 3 that the first step is just IV saline. They love that question on Yosemite. So you give saline first, then you can go on to give a bisphosphonate for the treatment of hypercalcemia. Some students ask about calcitonin. I have not seen evidence of calcitonin being used for hypercalcemia on USMLE, even though it can be used. Okay, I've seen pomidronate. That tends to be the bisphosphonate used for hypercalcemia. Bisphosphonates like alendronate, they can be used for EG patients who have multiple myeloma to decrease the risk of lytic lesions. Uh, alendronate can be used in patients who are on corticosteroids. They ask that on 2CK NBMEs. I'll tell you, a woman with lupus is on her third course of oral prednisone in the past 18 months, and the answer is alendronate now. You give bisphosphonates to these patients to preserve bone density. Choice C, wrong fucking answer. 